Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. Questions tonight after a mom in the Twin Cities made the wrong choice, running into a store and leaving her six-year-old girl in the car. The girl was killed and her sister seriously hurt after the van they were in caught fire from another car in a parking lot. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer talks with parents locally about what age is okay to leave your kids in a running car. We're almost seven, three in November, and one in October. Ashley Netzer is a busy mom of three, and even though she has her hands full, there's something she rarely does. When you think about it, you should never do it, even if it's just that split second of running in. Netzer tells us the only time she's left her kids in the running car was when it was in the driveway and she had to run in the house to grab something. Other than that, she says she doesn't take any chances. I don't think kids are, can handle an emergency plan. And that's the exact reason some parents are now asking when, if at all, is the right age to leave your child unattended in a running car. I think it depends on the kid and you have to know your kid and you have to know your car. Some parents we talked to tell us they agree with Fallon Jones, saying it depends on the maturity of your child. Others say you should never do it. Minnesota law doesn't clearly say when is the right time to leave your child alone. However, some officials with the Minnesota Department of Human Services suggest any child under the age of eight should never be left alone. And in North Dakota, it's the same story. There's no magic age. As for Ashley Nedzer, she tells us she doesn't think you should ever leave your child alone in the car until they're teenagers. When they can think and have a job and be able to safely exit a vehicle if the parents weren't there to make a choice for them. And that's something she says you will never find her doing again, even if it is a quick run into the house to grab something. In Fargo, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. No word if the mom out of the Twin Cities is facing any charges. We were told that car fires can be extremely dangerous because there are components of the car that release heat quickly. The cushion material in the seats, all the plastic in the dash, there's fuel tanks on. Fargo Fire Marshal Ryan Erickson tells us a big way to prevent a car fire is to have it worked on regularly. That can prevent mechanical issues that could cause a fire. Additionally, always teach your kids about an exit plan. It's easier to escape from a vehicle, but officials say it doesn't hurt to teach your child to get out of a stopped car immediately if smoke is coming out of any part of it. Former Sanford Executive Director Curtis Webb is set to be charged. He's accused of theft by swindle for a scheme involving tens of thousands of dollars for fraudulent expense reimbursements. Investigators tracked down records of Webb's reimbursement requests, which often included hotels, airfare, event registration, rental cars, and food. He faces similar charges in Illinois in connection to a similar scheme where he worked with U.S. Cellular Coliseum. We have a warning tonight for pet owners. Toxic blue-green algae is killing dogs across the U.S., and it's been found in lakes here in the Valley. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly explains what signs to look for to keep your pets safe. Melissa Paintner loves taking her dog to aerial lakes and rivers. It's really fun to just kind of go out there and let them play and get out their energy. That's why she says she was shocked to hear that blue-green algae can be deadly for dogs, and it's found here in North Dakota and Minnesota. It's kind of heartbreaking to hear that it could possibly life-threatening if they get into the algae. Multiple dogs have died in both North Carolina and Massachusetts, and people here are just as vulnerable. I think a lot of people don't realize that um, just how toxic it can it can be just a small amount it doesn't take much gruco says blue green algae can pop up in any body of water so that's why it's so important to check the water before you or your dog get in it can cause anything from vomiting diarrhea to stiffness, to seizures, and then, of course, death. Blue-green algae is often described as scum, floating on the water, looking similar to spilled green paint or pea soup. Gruco says if your dog does come into contact with water that may have blue-green algae, you need to act fast. Remove from the situation and then hose down with fresh water. Try to provide some fresh drinking water. 
um, to try to dilute out some of that toxin. As of right now, there are more than a dozen locations with blue-green algae in North Dakota. The state game and fish has a full list. Officials say just because you can't see the scum on top of the water doesn't mean that the blue-green algae isn't there. They say it's best to just play it safe and stay out of the water. In Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. If you come across any water that appears to have blue-green algae, you're urged to report it immediately. To find out how to do that and learn more about this bacteria, go to our website, valleynewslive.com. A Valley City dog sits in limbo at a vet clinic after a concerned onlooker reported abuse to police. Take a look at this photo. You can see scabs, which police believe are from the dog being dragged on the ground. A woman posted to Facebook saying she initially saw the dog being dragged by its owner in Valley City. The woman later called the uh, called police when the dog appeared to be left behind. Valley City Police Chief Phil Hatcher says the dog is expected to survive. Both animal cruelty and abandonment are Class B misdemeanors. You know, we have to look at it as we don't know what the other side of the story is. Um, we we want to be object as objective as we can. Obviously, we're looking at um, the dog as potentially being a victim of cruelty or um, abandonment. The police chief is asking anyone with information to contact Valley City Police. Tonight we share a story about a firearm that was discovered near Breckenridge and Wapaton. Those who found the gun posted video of it online and now there's questions being asked. Valley News Team's Kelly Hubbard has details on the gun's discovery and what law enforcement has to say about it. This is a video of a firearm found along the Red River between Breckenridge and Wapaton, a gun that shows signs of rust. Brad Stessy lives off Oak Street next to the river. He says this finding is far from the norm here. This, no, this kind of thing wouldn't happen in this little neighborhood or we wouldn't really have any kind of shootings or any kind of, yeah, no gunfires at all. That's crazy. I mean, we kayak and swim in the river and stuff all the time. It's crazy that they find that just right here. It's the kid would have found that or something. Who knows what would happen? Even more puzzling for residents is whether this handgun is in any way tied to the high profile death of Andrew Sadek, whose body was found to the north of this discovery. Sadek was the 20 year old NDSCS student found dead in the Red River back in 2014. His body was found with a gunshot in the head, believed to be from a 22 caliber weapon. Five years later and the weapon hasn't turned up. There definitely could be some cool evidence that they really are looking for. When I checked with authorities, depending on who you talk to, they either told me they knew nothing of the gun or wouldn't be commenting until Tuesday. In Wapaton, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. If you have any information on the gun, you can contact authorities. Bond has been set for the NDSU director accused of sexually assaulting a teenager. 45-year-old Viet Doan is charged with two counts of sexual assault after being accused of touching a minor in Bismarck. He's the director of enrollment management administrative systems at NDSU and has been on administrative leave. Even though Jeffrey Epstein is dead, the legal case against him is not. Court documents released Friday name several others who could be named defendants in the case. That list includes high profiler members of Epstein's inner circle. Miguel Almaguerra has more on what happens next. I'm Miguel Almaguerra. The criminal case against Jeffrey Epstein never named another defendant, but hours before his death, new court documents revealed a stunning allegation that the financier and a former member of his inner circle, British socialite Jelaine Maxwell, ordered a teenage girl to have sex with powerful men. It started with one, and then it trickled into two, and then so on and so forth. And Virginia Roberts you know, Jufree you know, told the Miami Herald last year Maxwell recruited and groomed her as a sex slave for the rich and famous, including Epstein. That is what we, the people, want. Seen here at the U.N., Maxwell, who denied wrongdoing and was never charged with a crime, settled out of courts with Roberts Jufree. But today, the attorney general said any possible accomplice is under investigation. Any co-conspirators should not rest easy. The victims deserve justice, and they will get it. And Epstein's accusers are filing a barrage of civil lawsuits with vast estates in Florida, New Mexico, New York, and in the Virgin Islands. Epstein was said to be worth at least $559 million. Michelle Licata says she is a victim. Money will never make the pain go away and it will just live on with me forever. Tonight, Jeffrey Epstein may be dead, but his accusers still want their day in court. 
Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. Epstein's death came just one day after a trove of court documents was unsealed, providing new details about the alleged sex trafficking. Remember that bull that got buried in a blizzard this winter in South Dakota? Well, he's had a tough summer, too. This is a picture of night dreams buried in that snowdrift near Kyle, South Dakota. And this was last night. The bull's owner says this was the worst flash, flash flooding he has ever seen in all his years at the rodeo company. He said the water was up to the bellies of the bulls at one point. And as you can see, the water almost covers some of the bleachers at the arena. The owner says all the bulls are okay, but they did have to dig out a pickup that washed away. Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with no wait weather. Well, soggy start to our work week today, and now thunderstorms are rumbling out of the central Dakotas. This line of thunderstorms earlier did produce a tornado just off to the west of the Max area out there off of Highway uh, 83. Moving off to the east southeast at about 40 miles per hour, it's mainly in uh, the uh, Kidder County area. Here's some timings on this storm moving at the pace it is uh, being near Sykeston by the 1040 hours. So we'll keep our eyes on this. And right now it's not severe. The main risk from this line of storms is going to be gusty straight line winds. This little backward C shape that we see here is called a bow echo. And oftentimes when uh, storms are capable of some stout winds, we see that signature on the radar. So it will be continuing to move towards western Stutzman County. Here's the hail tracker. This uh, purple color you see here, uh, less than severe. When we get the bright blues in there, maybe three quarters of an inch in diameter or so. So uh, sub severe category at this time. But our western counties are moving towards you. A few showers developing right in the uh, southern Red River Valley and in northeastern parts of South Dakota, just off to the east of Sisseton did enough to uh, wet the interstate down there at uh, I-29. Here's the low pressure system responsible for our unsettled weather. It's continuing to slowly swirl its way into northwest parts of North Dakota right now. A look at your current conditions out at Hector International. We remain very cloudy, 64 on the thermometer. The wind has calmed down. Look at the dew point temperature, 62. So that's how much cooling we need to do to our air, two degrees, before it becomes saturated. 93% your relative humidity at this hour. Here is a look at your hour by hour forecast. And as we take a look at the first few hours tonight, the thunderstorms are expected to really diminish in intensity as they move into our area here with uh, more stable air. Temperatures will be slipping down into the 50s for most locations and the rain chances do continue mainly in our northern counties through the overnight hours. And we still could hear some rumbles of thunder and some gusts of wind in western Stutzman County here in the upcoming hour or so. Now, as we go through the first hours of our day tomorrow, the rain chances continue, but these will be hit and miss showers. They'll be fairly brief and most substantial up north. Uh, in the afternoon, the wind starts picking up as that low pressure spins through. We'll see wind gusts over 25 miles per hour where you see the blue arrows and over 30 miles per hour off in our western counties. Finally, late in the day, a little break in the cloud cover as drier air will work its way down from the north, setting us up for quieter weather on your Wednesday. So another day with temperatures well below average and temperatures peaking in the 60s for most locations, particularly where there's showers. So what well, definitely will put a little curve in the harvest. There's some grain and thanks Zach for uploading your harvest photo there. A beauty it is. Here's a look at a dry Wednesday. 75 is what we make it up to in Fargo. On Thursday, we'll reintroduce spotty shower chances and we'll be in the mid 70s and on our way up as we head into the weekend. Sunday looks like the pick day right now looking dry and 80. And if you are a summer weather lover next week, it looks like the mid 80s returns. All right. Thanks. Hutch. You bet. Up next on Valley News Live 10 at 10.